morning grade 7th and welcome to the online classes of NLK group of schools. Today we will continue with chapter 1 of English literature Darwin Diaries. Students note that this is part 3 of the video and we have already completed with part 1 and 2. I hope you all have watched both the parts. So let's continue with our today's content but before that let's have a quick recap of our previous two classes. Students, in our last class, we learned that Charles Darwin visited the Galapagos Island. He landed on the northeast coast of the Chatham Island along with other team members. Students, do you remember the name of the ship they were traveling on? The name of the ship was HMS Peak. Next, we came to know about the land on the Chatham Island, which was dark colored with stunted brushwood as the only vegetation. We came to know that the beach was made of dark colored lava and there were craters and steaming vent all around the place. Next we came to know about the birds of that place. The birds were unaccustomed to human company. They did not fear human beings. It was easy for the team members to catch or prod the birds. Then we came to know about the sea going iguanas that had failed to develop the hereditary instinct of fearing from human company. Then we came to know about the biggest inhabitant of the Galapagos Island that was the huge Galapagos tortoise which were not at all concerned or even aware that the narrator perched on its shell. We came to know that James Kincaid was trying to sit on the back of the tortoise but the tortoise didn't seem to be aware of this fact. Then they moved to the next group of island that was Albemarle Island students where they came across the second species of iguanas and that species of iguanas was land-based reptile. That species had also not learned to fear people. Students, now we move to page number 7 of our textbooks. Students, this is page number 7 of your textbooks in front of your screens. So let's move to the last paragraph of the same page we already completed it in our previous class, but let's have a quick recap of this island. This was Albemarle Island, where they came across the second species of iguana. In contrast to its cousin on the Chatham Island, this is a land-based reptile. It is just as unaccustomed to people as the sea-going iguanas on the Chatham Island. Mr. Darwin watched one of them burying itself in a burrow. When it was halfway underground, he pulled its tail. The iguanas emerged to see what the matter was. It clearly wanted to know what was impeding its progress and it stared hard at Mr. Darwin, as if to say, what are you playing at? But it wasn't afraid. It hadn't yet learned to fear people. Student, the narrator from this para is trying to explain us about this sea going iguanas contrast cousin that is the land based reptile the other species of the iguanas over here he's trying to tell us when mr darwin was watching one of the iguanas he wanted to know how will this iguana react over here so he pulled one of it from its burrow with and just noticed what is the reaction of the iguana iguana just stared hard at Mr. Darwin, not because it was angry, but just to know why did Darwin do that. It this species of iguanas had also not learned to fear people. So now let's move to next page, but before that you can see in front of your screen few pictures of birds. Students, do you know the name of these birds? And why am I showing you this picture? So let's move and that will help you to find the answer to these questions. Students, this is page number 8 of your textbooks. Where we'll come to know about the last group of islands James, Darwin and other crew members are on. That is the James Island. Don't confuse between the names of James Kincaid and the island. This is James Island. That was the last island they all visited. James Island was the last island we visited. 
Mr. Darwin was particularly interested in the finches. Their habits were varied. Some of them lived on cacti and some on insects and leaves. Some stayed on the ground while others lived in the trees. Students, you must be thinking that what are these finches? I showed you this picture, remember? You know, these are pictures of birds. These are known as finches. Finches students are small resident birds with colorful feathers or I can say plumages. So over here, Mr. Darwin was interested in these birds. He wanted to know more about their eating and living habits. For that, he was observing these birds where he came to learn about that different birds had different habits. Some of them were living on the cactus while some were living on insects and tree leaves. That means they used to eat the cactus or insect or leaves. While few of the birds were interested to live on the trees and some of them were interested to live on the ground. Mr. Darwin had them all sketched. Now what the narrator tells us that Mr. Darwin was so much interested that he sketched all the birds in a sketchbook. Means he drew pictures of all those birds. He would lay out the sketches and point out the way they had been suited to their particular diet. Now, he is very minutely observing the structure of those birds, the beaks of the birds and their eating habit. He is making a comparison that if this bird is having a pointed beak, he is eating such kind of food. He is just very minutely making an observation on those birds. Some had long pointed beaks while other had shorter heavier ones. He sat watching the wildlife and smiled. Now student, he was very minutely observing and he concluded that some of the birds had pointed beaks while some had a shorter one. And do you know why was he smiling while watching the wildlife? Any reason behind that? Think you are watching something very interesting which fascinates you and you are dreaming about something very cool which you like and you want to have it. You also smile. Same way when Mr. Darwin was watching the wildlife. He was admiring the beauty of the wildlife. He was smiling. The reason behind that was just only because he was watching the wildlife and appreciating the beauty and diversity of the wildlife in the Galapagos Island. That was the reason he was smiling. I hope this much is clear to you. So now let's, let's move to the last paragraph of our chapter. As we sailed away from the island, some of the officers told Mr. Darwin that they had seen different birds and tortoise on different islands. Now, when they were sailing away from that place, means they had left that place, officers, means the other crew members of the HMS Beagle ship, told Mr. Darwin that they came across different birds and tortoise on different islands, means they saw various species. This has provided him food for thought. Now, student, what do we mean by food for thought? Food for thought means that Mr. Darwin got something to think on very seriously. He calls the Galapagos the land that time forgot. I am feeling it is a land he will remember all his life. Now students, what does the narrator mean by calling the Galapagos the land, uh, Galapagos the land that time forgot? What do we mean by this statement? By this statement, the narrator wants to tell us that the archipelago of the island was located so far away from human civilization means there were no human company on that island that the animals could fear away from. That was the time when the nature was all different from the place we live in. You all have seen in the chapter as it was portrayed to you that the Galapagos Islands are beautiful islands where the species are not at all affected by human company. Today we are living in cities where we are cutting down the trees and all over the place the animals are 
just could not be found. Why? Because we are cutting the trees and developing the cities. Modern civilization over there is not at all there. The, although there is limited vegetation, but the numerous species can be supported. Animals like sea and land going iguanas, the Galapagos tortoise and the finches were not at all affected by the team of the HMS Beagle over there when they were being obso uh, observed by them. They tried to get their attention, but the species were not at all scared. Modern civilization over there has not yet been able to establish control. It is far away and completely aloof from the world of Mr. Darwin and the Creole. The Galapagos Island and its land, animals and vegetation are a world of its own. Means they are just away from our land and no human company could be found at that place. Now at the end narrator says that Mr. Darwin will never be able to forget, forget such a land such a group of island in his whole lifetime. Students, this was all in the chapter. I hope the chapter is clear to you. But before we end with the class, let's have some vocabulary words for today. The verse, first word is finches, resident birds with colorful plumages. Plumages student is feathers. Second word is food for thought, something worth seriously thinking about. Third word student is emerged, to appear or come out of somewhere. We came to know about emerged when the iguana came out of the barrow, just to see who was impeding its process. Now impeding, de delay or prevent by obstructing them. Fifth word student is sprawled. To fall with your arms and legs spread out in an untidy way. The midshipmen fall in the same way. Now students, we will have a comparison between all the three islands we have read about in this chapter. The first group of island was the Chatham Island. Over here we learned that the land all around was dragged and buckled. The beach was made of dark colored lava. The only vegetation was stunted brushwood. This was all we came to know about the land. Then we came to know about the sea around the Chatham Island that was swarming with fish, sharks and turtle. Then we came to know about the birds which were unaccustomed to human company. Next was the sea going iguanas which had failed to develop the hereditary instinct of fearing from human company. And the last was the Galapagos tortoise. They are very huge about two hundred pounds each. They were also not concerned or aware of the fact that James perched on its shell. Perched means rest. Next we came come to know about the Albemal Island. Albemal Island is the second group of island they went to. Students over here we came across the second species of iguanas that was a land based reptile. Iguanas on this island were not afraid as they hadn't learned to fear people. Mr. Darwin proved this how when one of the iguana was burying itself in a burrow, he pulled it from its tail and the iguanas just stared hard at Mr. Darwin just to know what the matter was. Then we move to the third group of island that is the James Island and this was the last island they visited. After that, they left that place. Over here, what was Mr. Darwin observing? That was finches. And what we came to know about the finches? Their habits were varied. Varied means different. Some lived on cacti and some on insects and leaves. Some stayed on the ground while others lived in the trees. Then, Mr. Darwin made sketches of all these finches. Mr. Darwin sketched them all. They all had beaks suited to their particular diet means the beak of the bird was according to the diet they were consuming. Last we came to know some had long pointy beaks while other had shorter heavier ones. 
This was all about the three group of islands they visited. The first was the Chatham Island. The second was, uh, second one was Albemarle Island. And the third was the James Island. Student, I hope the chapter is very much clear to you and you have no confusion in your mind. Please go through this three distinctions again in case you are confused. That's all for today. Thank you. We are over with this chapter and I hope this is clear to you. Thank you very much students. Stay in, stay safe.